Hi, it's Mateo for the Disability Channel and Just for Kicks. And today we're here with my brother Nicholas, and we're going to be dis dissecting this computer right here. Now, before we start, a uh, quick warning. Computers are very finicky machines, so don't try and open yours up and tamper with it, as both you and your computer could be damaged. Uh, always make sure you're with an adult when handling electric electrical equipment, and make sure it's unplugged before you even attempt to take it apart. Now, with that being said, let's get into how this computer works. Say hi, Nico. Hello. So, Nico, I see you've uh, already taken apart this little computer, eh? Yep. <laughs> very yeah. dusty. So, uh, I mean, I think first things first, how does any, what, what are these parts? Like, what do they do? So, well, yeah, the kids are the, this is your processor. It handles all the information coming in and it's connected right to the motherboard. Okay, so what does that mean, though? So, like, if you're to press WASD, this would get the sig, the motherboard would get the signal. This would process that information then send the information back to the motherboard to your mod to your to all the other components. Okay, so basically it's what lets you pressing the keyboard go to the computer and make it say, okay, you press W A S N D. Yeah, sir, basically. Okay, so it's an advanced. It wire. processes all the information that has been sent to your motherboard. Alright, that's the that's interesting. And uh, how important would you say? It's like the most important thing for the computer? It's one of the most important things this is basically everything and is probably more important than your than all the other components because this can also act as a GPU for some computers. Interesting. They'll have multiple of they have different things. So what is a GPU anyway, Nikki? It's the graphics card that handles all your graphics, so your video resolution, your video video speed and all of that. It's just oh. your video. Oh okay. So it handles the video speed for the computer. So is that like if I was recording something video or I'm watching cats? A little bit of both. So like if you're to look at play a game mm -hmm. and, you're, and you're low on frames and your resolution is like really pixely, yeah. if you put a GPU in, it'll boost your frames and also fix, um, give you higher resolution if it's your computer's issue. Mainly it'll give you more resolution, so it'll make the picture look better, mm -hmm. and it'll give you more frames, so you can process like each frame per second more. So Nico, what is this box right here? This is your hard drive. There's multiple formats that you can get for storage. Mm -hmm. There's SSD and solid state drive. This is a hard drive. One's older, not as fast, but it works very good. It okay. goes into your PC and holds all your storage for like all your videos, all your programs, and everything in your computer, even your operating system. Hmm. Okay, so it's just the memory box then. Yeah, so it's kind of like your brain. Okay, so what makes that different from like the SD cards and other things you mentioned earlier? What makes the hard drive different? Sorry. What do you mean? Okay, well you said that the hard drive keeps the memory of what you're doing, the memory of your computer. Yeah. So how is this keeping the memory different from like an SD card keeping the memory? Because that's what SD cards do, it keeps memory. Well, it's not much different, just SD cards are like a USB stick. Mm -hmm. It holds a certain amount of memory that you can transport all over the place. This has to be plugged in straight into your mother, your computer for it to actually work, or SD cards and USB can just be plugged into a USB port of your computer and access all your files and take them out. Mm. All right, interesting. So that's a couple of squares we've gotten done, but how about we go for something different? A rectangle. What is this? This is your this is your RAM stick or memory. It basically helps you. Um, what is it called? It helps you um, with the shorter term. So like, if your hard drive was to be unplugged, everything would run on this for a short while, as long as it can hold it until your computer fully shuts off. Oh, okay, so, so it's a backup. Kind of necessarily, it's like a short, it's like a short-term backup. It doesn't last for days, or like you can't run on this. But if you, but if your hard drive gets unplugged, it, it will basically just hold your computer up for like a couple more minutes before it fully shuts off. Okay. And also, it can help you with your running speeds. So like, it can also help you like process and stuff. Hmm. All right. Interesting. 
So it's just lifeboat more or less for your data. Yeah, kind of. Okay. That's a lot of interesting stuff here. How about we go with something nice and simple that everyone understands? A fan. Now you don't I don't believe you have to explain what a fan is, but do explain yeah, it, why are there why are fans in computers? It basically holds the compute it basically helps you regulate your air temperature inside your computer. Mm -hmm. There's different ways you can orient the fan. You can have it where the air comes in through the fan or comes out through the fan. Mm -hmm. And you can have one of these to make it more colder. Typically if your fan is at the bottom of your PC or like at the front, it's bringing air into it. But if your fan's at the top or on the back of your PC, mm -hmm. that necessarily takes it, all the hot air in your PC in it and takes it out so you can have cold air that helps your components last longer and run faster. Okay. There's so also different types of fan that you can use. This is a air cooled um, mm -hmm. fan that you place onto your processor to keep this um, cold, keep this cooler and not overheat. These fans are a lot more important than your case fans because your processor overheats a lot faster than your other components. And that's why for older computers, sometimes you just have one fan and that'll be the fan that's on top of your processor. Well, not, if that's the case, Nico, then why is, why is it that with some computers like this one, there's more than one fan? Well, because even though you really just, you need one fan, you need, you have one fan for your um, processor, it's a lot more helpful to have multiple fans to regulate the air temperature for all your other components. This can, this helps with airflow in your PC, but it doesn't help with the other components as much as just having a regular fan in there. And for older computers, the reason they have very little is because they didn't have much room to put more fans in, where nowadays you have a lot more room and it's a lot bigger, and the components are a lot easier to place in certain areas for more fans to be placed in hmm. and help the airflow. Okay, okay. That's some of the stuff outside of the computer that we've taken out. Okay. So what is this detached part right here, Nikki? This is your Wi-Fi chip. It connects, it connects to an antenna that you would have outside for you to wireless, wirelessly connect to the Wi-Fi. Some mother, some newer motherboards yeah. would have this pre-installed, where you would, where it would come with an antenna. But motherboards that don't have, but motherboards that don't have antennas already built in, you'd have to buy a card like this and get antennas separately with the card, or you would get a USB stick that can connect to the Wi-Fi for you, but typically people would use Ethernet because it gives you more stable connection. Hmm, very interesting. And uh, looking in some more, we got a giant green plate here. Which what is a motherboard. The, that's a motherboard, okay. What does a motherboard do? It basically sends all the information everywhere. So basically, if you were to have a GPU in here, it would bring the GPU signals through the whole contraption up to your processor for it to process. Then it would bring that process to your monitor to signal you the information. Hmm. Basically, yeah. just Marvel basically just navigates everywhere. It's like a highway. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I think moving on to the last little bit we haven't touched on for out here yet. What is this big boy? This is your power supply. This will basically power your whole contraption. Mm -hmm. Depending on how much, how big your your um, components are, how much power they need, you would get one. You get a different power supply. Mm -hmm. This one is currently um, not powered. Is currently a two hundred twenty. Watt has currently 220 wattage, which is pretty low compared to other ones that you get nowadays because the computers have become a lot more bigger. This basically helps all of your components get power and work properly. You, you can get up to a thousand and more wattage depending on your components' needs. It was generally good to have most components, like if you get a PC, would nowadays would probably need like 800 or like 900, like mostly 800, maybe 900 wattage 
so you, that's what you would get and then this plugs in straight to your motherboard to help everything just be powered okay that's fascinating fascinating so I noticed a lot of these wires here some of them have uh, zip tags on them is there any reason why it's mainly just for kill management because there's so many cables and older PCs and newer PCs mm -hmm. they need instead of having them all over the place like being everywhere and being all disoriented people zip tie them so they're in one place together so it's easier to manage where they go easier to manage where to place them so they're not in the way of other components mm -hmm. and that's generally it okay so it's a good idea to put these on then for most people they choose to use zip ties it's good to have some sort of way to connect all of them i prefer not to have zip ties just because if you ever need to replace a component or replace a wire you'd have to cut the zip ties which is quite hard because they're on because there's not much to cut without it there's not much to cut or for me i'd prefer like a velcro strap that goes around the cable so you can unstrap it if you need to okay that's fair that's fair so before we start recording this, when we open this up, there was some dust in here, which everything gets dust. But Nico, how, how often would you say you have to dust the inside of your computer? It wouldn't be that often. If it's like an older computer like this that you just got that has been used before, I will say dust it straight away. Mm -hmm. But if it's like you just dusted it and it's like a newer computer, it would probably be like a month or two. Okay, the, so the dust like isn't very good for your computer. But also, it won't damage components unless it's like been a really like years of having it. So like generally around every like one to two months, just go in and dust it real quick. Some newer some newer cases would have filters that you can dust off. Mm -hmm. Some older cases you have to go in there manually. Sometimes take out components to get to the dark, to get to the under parts of the where the dust is. And also, in order to clean a computer, you should get some compressed air, and and some ethyl alcohol with some paper towels to help you clean the computer. You should not use a vacuum or anything that can that that con that conducts electricity or is static, where you could fry computer parts and then you would have to replace them and get something new. Hmm, okay, interesting. So I think that the majority of the questions I have for this computer. By the way, how old is it? Is this PC? So it's kind of hard to tell. I would. I don't know, honestly. I mean, I, I would say something along the 1990s, but I'm bad at timing and computer evolution. Nah, that, maybe, I don't know. I'm also bad with that. Hmm, <laughs> alright. Yeah, I mean, very interesting. So, uh, you think you can put it back together from this day, or? Yeah, it'll take a little bit, but you can most definitely put it together. With take, because there's so many screws, you can just, it's a lot easier. Okay. The fancy little screwdriver you got there. Is this made for computers? It's made for all types of technology. You can use it for like, you can use it for um, what is it? You can use it for phones. You can use it for computers. Just any technology that needs a screwdriver that isn't very powerful, you can basically use it for. Interesting. Kind of reminds me of the sonic screwdriver from Doctor Who. Nice. That's very neat. All right. So you uh, gonna put it back together now or? Yeah. All, all right. Time to. Hopefully, so he, hopefully it didn't take too long. <laughs> nah, you, get, you got this, buddy. So, while he puts together the computer, I suppose I'm out of questions. I'd like to thank Nico for coming out of the show. Right. I feel, buddy? I'm pretty good right now. He's got pretty it. good right now. So before we leave, I have a fun little question for you, Nico. I'll go ahead. What does your ideal computer setup look like? Elaborate on that more. Well, like, these computers are generally put in people's rooms for work and gaming and watching shows on Netflix and such. So what does your ideal setup for your room with a computer look like? Like what would I want in my room? Or what would you what, want? What, yeah. what would I use it for? Like you put, like what would you want? Like you put the computer box in, but like would you put it down on a table, on the floor? Where would you put it? And then like monitors and keyboards and such? I would more or less have the computer on the desk if I have a, wide, if I have a big enough desk. I would have two monitors, one in front of me, one to the left, for yeah. like anything I would be for convenience. And I would most, pr I would probably have like a microphone too with it for more games and stuff. Hmm. All right, very interesting. Well, I mean, that's all my questions. If you wonder about my personal opinion, I'm a PC guy. I don't got these big P. I don't got this. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's all my questions. Thank you for coming on, Nico. Got any last words? Um. 
whenever you're trying to build PCs, get a grounder so you don't conduct electric shock and shock and fry these computer parts. Oh, they're fragile, aren't they? Yeah, and a little bit of like electricity could easily um, short circuit your motherboard. Yes, that's a good point to reiterate the safety of this. Computers are delicate, and so are you. So don't, so don't mess around with them too much. Be careful when carrying them. They can be very heavy. Be careful when dealing with, be careful when coming in contact with them as electricity could still be within circuits. And again, make sure you're safe and have a supervision if you're underage. I'm Mateo for the Disability Channel and Just for Kids, signing off.